Horizon Forbidden West's first piece of DLC, Burning Shores, has come with big expectations. This PS5 exclusive piece of content has cut off PS4 players, but it has cushioned that blow by fully grasping the power of Sony's flagship machine. At the time of recording, Aloy's Next Journey has been out for a few days, priced at $20 slash £15, so the question is, is this a must-play piece of content for PS5 owners, or is it only going to appeal to the die-hard Horizon fans? Well, it's a little bit complicated. Straight away, it's absolutely obvious where the increased power that comes with being a PlayStation 5 game has been used. The game is better looking than even Forbidden West, with some of the technical hiccups previously present, such as aggressive texture pop-in, being either completely eliminated or totally minimized. Likewise, draw distances to my eye looked extended and more spectacular, while the added verticality of flying high above the player space before diving below it underwater was pretty much seamless. Especially in the final level and final boss encounter, which, don't worry, I will not spoil here, there's a sense of spectacle and scale that just wouldn't be possible on the last gen machines. Also, it was completely hyped up and memed to death before this piece of DLC came out, but those clouds that you get to fly through really are the best looking clouds in gaming. Those things are mwah, magnificent. The environment itself, Burning Shores, actually takes place in Horizon's version of LA, if you didn't know, is also an incredible visual treat. While the base game featured similarly impressive beaches, flora, and crashing waves, Burning Shores complements these features with its namesake, that being a distant volcano that has spewed lava across the landscape. And this juxtaposition between the lush, healthy greenery of the earth and the orange fire and burnt up rubble living side by side does allow Horizon's player space to feel entirely its own. And this kind of geographical turbulence is something I hope, I really hope is doubled down on in the third game. Give me storms, give me massive irregularities, give me the planet itself trying and failing to stay together. Now the only issue, if you could call it that, with Burning Shores' excellent visuals is that they kind of promise gameplay innovations that the DLC just isn't interested in introducing. And what I mean by that is the volcanic environment, for instance, is a treat to see, but it doesn't make for any interesting encounters or new gameplay conundrums. Likewise, the skyboxes are insane, don't get me wrong, but there's no aerial combat or real reason to go exploring that far. Up. It's more of a curio than it is a core feature of this experience. Likewise, being able to fly and then dive into the ocean promises to add extensive verticality to the gameplay, but it's only really utilized in a 30 second stint in one of the main missions. It's not something you're encouraged to do all of the time. And even that final encounter which I mentioned, which initially promises to be tackled through a gameplay twist unlike anything else in the series, is ultimately taken on by an NPC instead of Aloy, while you, the player, engage in combat the same way that you did throughout the rest of the DLC and Forbidden West as a whole. The sequence itself is certainly bigger and more of a spectacle than anything else you've seen before in this franchise, don't get me wrong, but it's all set dressing for gameplay that you were kind of doing in hour one. But to be honest, it kind of feels a little bit harsh to mark Burning Shores down for that in a way. After all, this is a relatively small piece of DLC. It's $20, like I mentioned, and you do get a new map, but that map only has five new main missions and three dedicated side missions outside of the collectibles. It's not Horizon 3 by any stretch, and it's not a Point Lookout or Blood and Wild style expansion either. A more apt comparison would be, unsurprisingly, Frozen Wilds from Horizon Zero Dawn. So if all you're after is more Forbidden West, then you'll no doubt be satisfied. But if you thought a new map would come populated with loads of stuff to do, and tens and tens of hours of quests, then temper those expectations. This is a piece of DLC, it's not a full-on major expansion. For me though, with the DLC being a PS5 exclusive and with it introducing a bunch of interesting features, it is disappointing to see them only used as this set dressing that I mentioned. There was the potential for Burning Shores to be bolder, to experiment and live up to the potential of its excellent environment and new creatures, but it ultimately plays it safe and gives you cool new things to look at as opposed to cool new things to do. 
Fortunately, the core of Burning Shores is propped up by an extremely satisfying backbone, and that's the dynamic between Aloy and new character Seika. And this really is the latter's story. She's a character who already has her own mission and her own secrets by the time the player turns up on the Burning Shores. And like most Horizon characters, Seika is instantly memorable, bringing a more grounded personal story to this narrative that rounds out Aloy's true end of the universe sticks. The story itself, that being Aloy chasing down a remaining zenith known as Londra, isn't too much to write home about. There aren't many huge franchise-wide revelations in there, and it's very much a side quest. But the development that you get between Aloy and Seika more than make this a worthwhile story to tell. They have a really great dynamic, and it actually makes me like Aloy as a character way more. She feels so much more like a human in this piece of DLC. Honestly, after loving Zero Dawn, I kind of thought that Aloy was the most boring part of her own game in Forbidden West. She was just a little bit sidelined, you didn't get enough of her personality, and she just kind of felt more like an archetype, in my opinion, than a real human person in this situation. And the DLC rectifies that issue for me, reminding me why I fell in love with this character initially. That's partly down to the writing, it's partly down to Ashley Birch's always stellar performance, but it's also partly down to the fact that Aloy, like I said, just feels a little bit more human here. She gets to have a, a realer, for lack of a better term, relationship and dynamic with another character that allows her to be a little bit more vulnerable, it allows her to be a little bit more emotional and kind of just have a little bit more personality. As a result, she stands out way more. Now I've already mentioned that gameplay is pretty much just more of what Forbidden West brought to the table, but it is worth singling out here. That's because Burning Shores does add a new weapon to the table alongside new skills and upgraded versions of your old weapons and armor. And these are welcome, though they're not exactly huge draws to the DLC unless you're someone who wants the absolute best gear you can possibly get. Likewise, there are new machines to hunt that are native to LA, and make no mistake, this is an endgame piece of content. Burning Shores assumes that you're fully geared up and familiar with Forbidden West's rhythms, and if, like me, you're jumping back in after a year away and have kind of forgotten those rhythms, it's probably going to be extremely punishing while you get back to grips with it. Even with my max level weapons and my platinum trophy getting runtime in Forbidden West, I was getting absolutely tooled on from the very first encounter. But even if you are jumping in straight after Forbidden West, it's still going to pose a challenge with hard hitting new enemies and a sheer volume of them that at times can honestly get a little bit overwhelming. With so many machines to juggle and at this point so many skills, weapons and abilities to use, combat can feel a little bit too chaotic and bloated. And yes, that is admittedly an issue that was inherited from Forbidden West itself, but Burning Shores' additions only exacerbate an issue that was already present. When it all clicks, it can feel as thrilling and as satisfying as Horizon's combat ever has been, but there are times when it just feels a little bit too punishing and a little bit unfair. And that's not because the enemies are hard, I love the challenge of Horizon games, it's just, like I said, there are quality of life issues that have you just getting tooled on from things off screen that you can't see, or the camera freaks out, or you've got something flying there and you've got something attacking you here. It could be good to manage those enemies in a way using all your tools, but the game is just, like I said, just a little bit too overwhelming, and that was also an issue with the core experience, but again, exacerbated here. The scope of Forbidden West has only gotten bigger with Burning Shores, and while that provides players with a lot of content, I personally get the feeling that this is probably as far as you can push the formula as it is right now without something breaking. And that's not just in terms of the combat, that's in terms of the exploration, that's in terms of the upgrade trees, it's kind of in terms of just how big everything has gotten. There's so much stuff in this franchise right now, but only a few things that you're actually encouraged to interact with in a meaningful way. The disparate parts that are in there are all solid, don't get me wrong, nothing is bad per se. There's just a lack of through line connecting them to something more meaningful. And in that way, Burning Shores can be a whole lot of fun in stints, but also feel you leaving like it could have been more consistent in something a little bit more than it ultimately is. 
That said though, I don't want to be too harsh because Burning Shores is ultimately a solid DLC pack. It's a beautiful game that'll have you putting the controller down and just ogling the world Guerrilla Games has created, while the combat can be satisfying and the new characters are great additions to the overall narrative. My issues mostly come down to expectations and bloat that was carried over from the main game. If you're only wanting more of what Forbidden West had to offer, then it's going to be incredibly hard to be disappointed with burning shots. But if you're wanting a larger bridge between the second and inevitable third game, or a real next-gen showcase mechanically, it might leave you a little bit wanting. For the price, it's a must-play for fans of this series, but it might not leave you absolutely salivating and wanting to pre-order Horizon 3 as soon as it launches. But that's only my dumb opinion. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. How have you been getting on with Burning Shores? Are you a little bit sick of Horizon's formula? Or do you just want to keep getting that meal over and over again? Let me know. And while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe. And head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you soon.